All righty. Where are we taking this from? <laughs> it's sports. Yeah. You guys asked me if I would be if I would be a pimp. How about you? Okay, tell us. Would you be a madame? Where do you? Yeah, I would. I I would be a madame. I would be the be madame. I would have the finest girls, the finest men. I would know how to cheat them. You know, I'd know how to. I believe that I would be the best pimp because I would know how to adhere to the needs of my workers. Your staff. Yeah, I'd know how to protect them. I'd know what they need in terms of incentives and those type of stuff. Like, guys, escorts need medical aid. All that pounding. My gosh. Definitely. They definitely need medical aid. I, You know, I I think I see it. I see you being that uh, madame that offers, like, child care. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know things that yeah. are important that your your boss tends to not think about sometimes. Those benefits, you know, mm. just you know, you know simple like the things. Way. Gym membership, you know, so you stay fit because exactly. you must be able to do your job. You must be exactly. Yeah, yes, I would. I, I would be on the tip. You're an athlete, and too. yeah, and like there's money to be made from. I mean, like, sex is in demand, guys. Clearly, this thing, if, and since biblical times, so we cannot just turn a blind eye and be like, oh, you know, and I understand some people have morals, and I get that, but, you know, for me, it's like, I'm, if somebody is willing to do it, then at least let me be the person to, to have them do it right. You know, let them, let them enjoy the line of work that they do instead of them just getting sales because apparently allegedly escorts have a tendency of telling these men to hurry the F up. (laughs) Okay, wait, you see, I think this is a very important conversation to have because what happened to that um, entire legalization of sex work? Because this has already been a conversation in South Africa. It's not new information. People are saying that, guys, it's not as bad and again, goes back to as much as you can say it's regulated, they are, there is a dark side to it because right now it yes. isn't necessarily legal. So there's a lot of mm-hmm. things that now cannot be implemented to protect these employees, these staffers in their jobs. And if you try to report, for example, assault, when you are in these roles, who are you going to report it to? That they're going to take you seriously. They're not going to take you seriously. They're going to say, hi, mom, is you selling? So Guys, why are you upset? As much as there's GBV violence, you, uh, GBV, you still hear stories of cops turning wives around, telling them to go sort mm. out their problems at home and not at the police station. Like, uh. now imagine trying to be a sex worker who reports assault on the job. In South Africa? No, no, no. You get to... You will get told, you know, you're home and um, you, 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 you knew what you were doing. You and it on you, yourself. Oh, they're not going to take you seriously. They're going to overlook you. They're going to ridicule you. And on top of that, they're still going to ask for bums. That's the most effed up part. <laughs> the messed up part is they're still going to ask. And for free, mind you. Exactly. So, it's it is like disgusting as to how as much as men, cause it's predominantly men that buy women and men, it's men predominantly. And it's disgusting how men are the ones that are demanding for this type of service, but they are the ones in the same breath that want to not regulate it, not, you know, um, make sure that everything runs smooth. Like it, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the um, the taxi industry to say that the government is very much aware that the taxi industry is a very important and crucial transportation uh, in this country, but they don't make efforts to make sure that it runs smoothly, meaning that they don't create certain lanes for taxis and those type of things. So... It's literally like that to say, 
you want the sex, but then you don't want the sex to be beneficial to the person that you're having sex with. Yeah, it goes back to, like you're saying, it's a power play. But I think also a lot of people benefit from it being unregulated because they get to get away with a lot more things. And that is fucked up. And that is what I wouldn't do. You know, I wouldn't want people to get away with certain things. With whose with whose employees? Yeah. Allegedly, I've got connections in, in, in the Middle East and in Russia. I've got connections to the nuclear weapons, allegedly. Me, if you touch my stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. Allegedly. Allegedly. But, it's like, we need more people like that, you know, to make it regulated. Because, I mean, girl, we being knew that this thing is... It's been a thing. Hey, there was a whole book, Hockey Club. There's a whole... this. Listen, I don't think it's a secret anymore. I think I was... Actually, this is what I was asking earlier is... Remember when Bo Faith and all of them got exposed on social media for this type of stuff as well? Where they were recruiting uh, people. I remember they trended some a few years back mm. over the same stuff. And it's like we've always known these things that are happening. And people started testifying stories about how they kind of got out of these situations. Da 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 da. But it's a real thing, man. And yes, even the boys. Who means a few mm, the boys? Them. The boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ask me about the boys. I'll tell you about the boys. Oh, <laughs> child. I'm, uh, the boys. Sharon's got the tea here. Sharon's got the tea. Listen, the boys are the ones that are doing the ultimate. They're doing the most. Listen, like, you'd be shocked at the turnover of how many men accept these type of roles versus how many women accept that accept these type of roles. You'd assume it's more women than men. Uh You'd assume that it's more women. Little do you know. And with men, it's easier for them because they get to get protected. So they know, okay, their shit is not going to be out there in the streets because it needs to be on lock. Whereas with the women, yeah, you can have those type of deals, but... A man would not feel obliged to keep that a secret as compared to him having sex with another man. True. Because then if they're <laughs> undercover, then they don't want anyone to know because they're still in the closet. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I see how it could happen that more guys would do this because at the same time, I think women have more opportunities where you see it happen more frequently, frequently with women where they date up. And when I say up, I mean of higher financial status. So you don't necessarily yes. do it as a job because you can actually do it socially. And chicks do this socially also. It happens where you date up so that you have access to certain resources. They may not pay, pay you cash. Mm. Some even get an allowance, but they may not pay you cash. It could be in resources. It could be in experiences. But yeah, it does happen. It's an exchange, guys, at the end of the day. Who is it? Who's what that says? We, it all, we all do it. We just do it differently, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. She's right. <laughs> it's just different levels, bro. It's just different levels. Yes, she... Somebody, some people do it for a Porsche. Some people do it for 50 bucks, bro. <laughs> it's different levels. That's true. Who's what? When she was talking about um her and U Kanye, it was a Kanye Bao's incident because they both mm. ended up with the same guy. She's like, hey, we all do it different levels though. Mm. Essentially. Kanye, Kanye, Kanye does it her own way, mm-hmm. allegedly. And I do it my own way, oh, allegedly. Snap. So That's actually another story that we didn't have weirdly enough. Now that we're talking about it. Well, Kanye, you heard the rumors that her new boyfriend is allegedly married with children in the U.S.? I mean, I'm not surprised that um, she's dating a man of that caliber and a man like that. Because she she looks like a woman who, who likes being in a relationship, but not like full full time like she's yeah, not yeah. and i think she's also healing from the the relationship that she had with that other guy which guy 
Um, the Quilla Tibs guy, I forgot what his name is. Oh, the recent breakup, yeah. What yes, because they've been together for like 10 years. Yeah. So I think she's probably also still... Rebounding. You know. Mm. You rebound, bro. For 10 years, finally, I'm going to phone your contract. I'm going to show you 24 months. When it's time for you to review your contract, you must be like, I, this guy is not going to make it for next term. We are canceling. Cancel with the insurance. Yeah, with the insurance, cancel. It's like, if it's not working out, or if there's nothing big or better or greater that you're not planning for, I it's easy. Eh? Yeah. You see, even Willow agrees. Hmm. All right. Did I just... 24 months. Contract your phone. Speaking of contracts, um, OnlyFans has banned adult content. So apparently they reinstated the adult content because unfortunately they had lied that the banks did not want adult content in their partnership with OnlyFans. Banks came back, MasterCard actually came back and said that that was false. And then they backtracked <laughs> on their ban and said, no, sorry guys, you can continue to upload your content. So that was Oh, that's one. wonderful news. Yeah, so guys, get your accounts back live <laughs> or create a new account if you have not yet on OnlyFans. Make your, make your content want, public. I wanted to create an account, right? But I wanted uh, whoever I'm in a relationship with to manage it because, you know, they'll take you more seriously if it's a man behind <laughs> a woman, not just when doing it. They, when they said they're banning it, it's like, oh, man. That's gonna ruin my plan. <laughs> so now, <laughs> go back, girl. Do it. You can do it now. So now, so now it's back on. I'm like, okay, let's do this only fans thing. Let's make the coins. But Listen. people make money out of only fans. Safari has a, an account, right? Safari has an account. Everyone has an account, right? At this point, everybody has an account. Um, what was her name? Suki Hana. She bought a house off of her OnlyFans. I was watching the latest season of Love and Hip Hop and she was there with her mom <laughs> saying she wants to quit music because she's made so much money. She got a booth thing. She want to make another baby. I was like, hey, OnlyFans money. These checks be coming in. Right. Okay. okay. So, people, so people are actually like well, getting proper, money, proper, 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 proper money. money. But, I, but I know that like people are getting proper, proper, but I didn't know it was proper to a point where People want to just leave the the side hustles like recording and making music just for them to love off OnlyFans. Bruh, there's a lot of people making a lot of money on that. That's why they actually had to reinstate because I remember with Tumblr, Tumblr, the same thing happened to them a couple of years ago, which is weird to me. I'm, I just have to say on a side note, I've always had a Tumblr account. I didn't know there was adult content on Tumblr. I was like where are you guys searching what 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 were your hashtags who were you guys like following this is so weird to me but anyway tumblr also used to have adult content and they also then banned it and what happened is their share price dropped literally like overnight dropped and yeah it hasn't been the same since investors are not happy with that move so people were actually skipped um talking about it and they're like, whoa, is the same thing that happened to Tumblr gonna happen to OnlyFans? And it almost did, but they saved themselves by saying, It's cool, guys. Psych. It was just a joke. <laughs> it's April just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't actually banning nudity. They were banning certain adult content because people go all explicit the way. Content. Yeah, the explicit stuff. It wasn't just nudity. People are going all the way on OnlyFans. The porn hub stuff. Yeah, basically. Basically. Do you have an OnlyFans account? Listen, have, have you ever I have went the to OnlyFans and... So I downloaded the app and I remember it was after I saw somebody on my Facebook had their account. And I was like, I got curious. I was like, wait, 
she's got only fans and that's only because she's got really big tits i was like i always wondered so i was like let me go but i was like am i gonna pay you though <laughs> and i kind of ended there <laughs> i was like okay i ain't finna pay for it though and then yeah got you got that i've downloaded the app i won't lie have i thought about creating an account listen i've been broke before um <laughs> of course i've thought about it but no that's as far as i've gone so we know you would you would get one so you've never had an account i've never had an account i've never had an account but yeah, I was like, man, I mean, if you broke, hey, you really do think about such things. Hey, like, hey, sh- you know, when the stomach goes, hey. <laughs> and all you can smell is the vents you know, of the restaurants, the KFCs, the, you know I mean? the, the spares are just <laughs> opening the vents there, and you can smell it. You're like, hey, sh- only fans, man. I might just start an mm-hmm. only fans. What does Beyonce say in that song with Meg the Stallion? Talking about starting an only fans. That was the first time it was referenced in the song, actually. Wasn't that Meg yeah, Stallion yeah. Beyonce song? What was it? Meg and you know what? You see the beehive is on mm. cover. They're coming for us again, bruh. <laughs> they are coming for That's us strong. again. We always we always just here yeah, with <laughs> But it's not beef. It's not beef. It's just yeah. Yeah. Actually, now that we're talking Savage, that was the Savage remix. Now that we're talking about Beyonce, I want to I wanna bring another off-topic to the table. This was not something we are going to talk about. I forgot to add it to the agenda, but you saw the photo shoot she did with, uh, with her husband. With, um, was it Tiff- Tiffany. With, with the Tiffany stolen jewelry. diamonds. <laughs> hey, those are stolen diamonds. Tiffany's diamond that they was are discovered. Diamonds. Please understand inverted commas discovered in South Africa in 1878, <laughs> I believe, or 71, one of the two. <clears throat> it was oh. discovered. Oh, they, they pretty much they jacked it from here and they're like, yo, look at this. Look at what we found. And now she is the first black woman to have ever worn it. And she's the first. I think that's a problem. Yeah. In that statement <laughs> alone, that's a problem. <laughs> Guys. And then people were upset. They were like, uh, uh, "When Lady Gaga wore it so many years ago, you guys were not making a big hoo-ha about it." Um, that's because nobody knew that Lady Gaga was the campaign with Lady Gaga the, as big as Beyonce's one. No, it wasn't. So obviously, we didn't know about that. We know about Beyonce because Beyonce is a big powerhouse brand by herself. And just because it's Beyonce, it doesn't mean that we must now say, Woo, we love it. No, we don't. Bring back the diamond. We want it back. No, I'm going to be extra critical because it's Beyonce. Remember when she did um, Black is King or whatever, the, that soundtrack? Yeah. And everyone praised her. They even said we should call her Mama Africa. <laughs> Can Mama They're Africa crazy. bring back the stone? <laughs> Can Mama Africa bring it back though? Can she bring it back though? That's what I asked. They were mad about the stone, also the artwork, the Basquiat artwork, uh, artwork that they pose next to. Basquiat, uh, they, yes, there were people, tw- people on Twitter were also mad about that because they're like, it is in vain of the artist's name. He would not want to be as- attached to. I guess I understand now the context, the colonial context of the diamond. So they wouldn't want the artist to be at attached to that so yeah i'm upset the beehive must come for me i'm upset right now i'm drake i'm upset um the the brand tiffany can literally turn this around and be like uh but it's 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 a black person that made our brand look bad it's it's we've, we've been doing this with white people this whole time and there hasn't been any backlash and then now it's a black person and there's so much backlash. It's not your stone to use and it's you must bring it back to us. And Can also, I, I've, oh, I've always said this now about Beyonce and Jay-Z, is that, yes, they are pro-black and they are about black power and black empowerment. But then the moment a white man comes with an offer, They're don't say no, people. they take it. They're business people, guys. Jay-Z told us he's a business. 
man. Exactly. So exactly. We, so yeah. They are philanthropic. Yes, philanthropic. Yes. Yes, they philanthropic work. Yeah. Is it's not something that they're doing because they genuinely want to do it. This is me and my opinion. They're not doing it because they genuinely want to do it. They're doing it because it's part of the business for them to do it. Because if you really were against slavery and black people not being free and uh, white people stealing stuff from Africa and making it their own, then you wouldn't really want to associate yourself with such campaigns. With such a brand. Exactly. I agree with you completely. I think more than anything... Beyonce and Jay-Z understand business and branding. They understand their brands. And what they've done is they pivoted their brand to the current social status. Because it's popular Mm -hmm. and it is relevant for brands and and everyone to be more woke and more um, conscious, they've shifted their brands in that direction. Look at Jay-Z growing out his hair into a uh, freeform thingy, dreadlocks, Haibo. Did you see him in that shoot? I was like, Haibo? How long has it been since this man cut his hair? No, no shade. Listen, do your free forms. I'm just like, I didn't expect Jay-Z to be that guy. And I do believe the enlightenment that comes with financial freedom. But at the same time, it feels quite convenient as well that they're able to pivot and choose either side whenever it's convenient for them. Because Jay-Z is the same person who partnered with the NFL after he supported Kaepernick for two seconds. And then now he's working with them in order to shift the perceptions towards what consumers are looking for. Same with Beyonce. She pivoted her music to become more um, African-inspired as she could see the Afrobeats movement uh, rolling over the world. So I feel like sometimes a lot of this stuff just feels very strategic. It feels very like... Mm -hmm. It's a business, though. And I, I, Mm -hmm. I commend them for always being upfront about it, but then at some point it becomes disingenuous. And I think that's the part where people get a bit like, okay, I'm a little over this narrative. I'm a little over this power couple dynamic. It's it just feels convenient for 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 a lot of parts. True. That's just my opinion, though. True. Um, we we're not gonna congratulate Beyonce on that. We canceling that. Yeah, I feel like they should get canceled for that one. They should know yeah. better. You don't. You don't. <laughs> In 2021, you just don't do that. Like, it's stolen goods. You should be saying, okay, yeah, you got the check for the campaign, but at the same time, that diamond's still stolen. And look at the country that it was stolen from. Look at where we are right now. Like, how much would that improve our economy? If If that diamond sat in our museums, how much tourism would we get, Um, for example? True. Okay. Would get a lot of attraction, but you know, it's yes. white people <laughs> milking us, oh, um, taking away from us, subtracting from us, and then when we say hello, can we please have our land back? They want to say no, 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 you need to pay us. Hey, <laughs> if you get an pay, you get an X. They had mirrors, bro. They gave us mirrors, remember. They came with mirrors and they gave that to us. And that's how the story In simple goes. English, we call such people scam artists. So white people who are in Africa, your grandfathers and your forefathers, they're scam artists. Con men. No difference to the ANC government that we have right now. <laughs> allegedly. But never mind, let's not even get into it. I was the queen of politics. I'm not even going to touch on that one. Mm-mm, <laughs> mm-mm, not even with a 10-inch pull. Kendrick is dropping his final TDE album. This has been confirmed by TDE. How are you guys feeling about that one? Okay, let me let me first ask this, the fan, because I know he's a fan. He introduced me to TDE. I didn't even know who these kids were before. <laughs> and now it's been like, what, t- over 10 years of them doing music. A Pulitzer, I can't, I don't even know if I'm saying Pulitzer it right. Prize. Pulitzer Prize. Levels. How do I feel about it? Like, uh, 
I don't really have any strong feelings about it. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's a strategic uh, business move. You know what I mean? And, like, every everything has its run, runs its course. And I feel like he's just moving on to, you know, bigger things for himself. Because he does have, like, a, a record company or some sort of, like, entertainment company that he has started up and all of that. So, as a as a uh, avid listener, you know what I mean, an enthusiast, you know, the, the word fan is a bit much. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm just, like, looking forward to what's to come, you know? Okay, my bad, my bad. <laughs> not a fan, not a fan. <laughs> I think it's going to be interesting. I'd like to hear what it sounds like. Yeah. I've never been like a heavy Kendrick fan, but I do respect the man's talent. So I'm looking forward to hearing how this sounds now that he's a Pulitzer. He hasn't dropped an album since he won the award, right? Uh, Mr. Kendrick. No. He hasn't. No, it's from his previous, his last album. Yeah. So I'm interested to hear what a Pulitzer Prize winning rapper sounds like on an album. That's what I want to hear. I don't know. How do you feel, Sharon? Um, I'm a Kendrick fan, and I'm surprised when saying, I'm not really a fan. I'm like, oh, my gosh, Tanda has said so much that she cannot stand this man's music. This man's music is not for her. Listen, I, <laughs> guys, I respect. <laughs> you, you know why I said that, right? Because I know that every time... There's always a Kendrick fan around. And the moment I say that, I'm going to, they're going to have me in the streets, brother. Right? Like, How are you going to listen to hip hop and then not be a Kendrick? Listen, listen. As He's not for me, but he's talented. He hmm. is talented. I will not take that. He away did say he's like, he's not your person. No, he's not for me. But like, I get it. I see. I see why you guys are excited. I, I see why he hypes people up. But yeah, it's just not for me, man. Hey, the sound is not for me. And as, there are some songs I like. There are some songs. Like money. Can you, what did you say? You said something. You said this, this, he raps in a... Okay. He said it, man. So why I said, hey, Amo, I'll like Sharon. You see, I even called you her your other name. Really, I'll check exposing me, bruh. No, what had happened was, right? <laughs> <laughs> what happened was what I was saying is the ma- for me it feels like when I hear Kendrick's song and I can't think of a specific one because I really don't like listen to Kendrick like that but like I'll hear the beat and I'm like this is a fire beat right I'm like okay I feel the beat <laughs> then I hear the hear the bars outside of the beat just acoustic makes sense like I read it it makes sense but I feel like when it goes together the rhythm, the there's just something is they both they too loud, right? For me, they're too loud on both sides. Like the beat is too hard, and then the raps. I'm just I can't hear what he's saying half the time. I'm not I can't follow, and maybe I'm just not smart enough to follow him. But I can't what? follow. I don't know if you guys he, like get what I'm talking about though. I don't. Like, I hear what you're saying. I can't even. I don't know which song mm. to quote to say. As an example, he tends to be a little bit, a bit too passionate on the mic. Yeah, so like he's shouting at me too, and the yeah. beat also <laughs> that's the word I'm looking for. Some, <laughs> some people do say that, like when they're listening to Kendrick, they feel like he, he's mad at them. You know what I mean? That is like uh, a criticism that people do have of him. But I, uh, I don't know. Maybe because I've been listening to him like since like uh like when Section Eighty dropped. That's when I discovered him. So maybe because I go that far back that it's like it's very easy for me to like yeah, you know? But I don't know. I don't know. But then again I do listen to relatively loud music. Like so hey. I don't know guys. Maybe like I said, maybe I'm just not smart enough. I I don't know. I don't know. The bars make sense when I read it. The beat is fire, but when they come together I just don't it's too it much just going it, on. it's just too much. It's too much going on, yeah. Like you know what? I don't want to say this because people are gonna get mad. Marukare, when I hold hold my rabiju, utle music I can tell, utle li music I can tell, and you stand in the middle of the road and they both like screaming at you, bruh. And it's two different genres of music, so it's just like it feels like that sometimes. Yeah, clip a card, you can tell. 
bakanga. Like it's just two two different situations going on. It's just it's, it's a, going in. Dude. No, listen. I'm not saying he's bad. That's not what I'm saying though. Yeah. The man has a pulitzer. Like I could listen. Don't listen to me. I'm just saying for <laughs> me though. That's yeah. just I haven't been able to listen like properly listen to him because that's how it feels. That's just that's just me. Hey, yo, they're gonna have me for those one, guys. Yo, should, like uh, you know what? I'm I'm mad at y'all for asking me about this. Matt, I think I put this on the agenda. Why did I put this on the agenda? Because it's good news though. The man's dropping an album. I know the fans are happy and excited. Like, damn it, why did I do this to myself? <laughs> <laughs> But his music feels like can I can 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 I can I just I'm sorry guys I know that you guys are from Palm City right but you know I I just wanna make reference to what people from Joburg have been saying. Marudi plus Jo, Ogas Hadi Jo. Nas, it's plots. It's plots. It's plots. Okay. <laughs> as a plus, as a plus, plots. it's like the plots, yeah. <laughs> okay, plot city, <laughs> <laughs> plot city. We'll call it plot city. Actually, it fits the narrative. Plot, plot city. city. Actually, <laughs> yeah. I think that I'm running with that one. I like it. So, um, do you, they were like we were talking about, you know, I'm a piano and whatnot, mm. and these guys were like, hey. Magazine as a computer, it rather sounded confusing. Listen, before there was Ama Piano, ne, ne, Lily Bacardi, guys. Uh, you guys, we need to. No, but Bacardi is old, bro. Yeah, Bacardi is old, bro. You know what I mean? That's an Bacardi old genre. Home, home. What was like before Ama Piano? Yeah. Home. No, but I feel. Like yeah, Gom. Yeah. But I feel like the originator Giddy Bakhadi guys. Yeah. Because the Bakhadi was there when we were like when we were proper in high school. Like Kupala yeah. like like I, from, I, I used like to listen course. to them since I was in primary. Yeah, I'm saying high school because I moved to Pretoria when I was in high school. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I was in high school. Yeah. So 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 I, I, I think when Tando listens to Kendrick Lamar listening to Ama Bakad, you understand? <laughs> like it's just a lot. Like <laughs> <laughs> Bakadi, I got to a point where I enjoyed it. So I'm maybe you know I will give Kendrick a chance. I'm gonna listen to this album and maybe this is the one that will change my mind. <laughs> This is it. I don't know. You know which one I feel like you should listen to? I feel like you should listen to select songs because I feel like you've just been listening to what plays on the radio, what gets yeah. popular. You don't like really deep dive into like the albums and like you know what I mean. So I'll pick songs for you to listen to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, here's here's something, guys. Another bit of content. I just got an idea from you saying that, right? With this episode, you're gonna create a playlist for me, right? A Kendrick playlist for me, right? And I'm right. gonna I'm gonna put this on Spotify. We're gonna share the link to the Spotify playlist. If there's any Kendrick fans or um what did you call it? Not fans, but enthusiasts avid listeners. or <laughs> avid listeners, you can join this part uh, this playlist and add onto it, contribute. And let's just do this. Let's make a, a, a Kendrick playlist. A can cancel Kendrick. Oh snap, we could play with the K. Okay, cool. I'll think about that later. I'll think about that later. <laughs> but there's some more content. We can play with the K word. Yeah, with the K word. 
<laughs> and he did come to South Africa, so that's a nice little 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 play on on letters over there. That will be fun. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, we're gonna mm-hmm. have a Spotify playlist. Listen to that, guys. Our first playlist, and we're gonna share the link. It's gonna be all Kendrick. Guys, convert me. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this responsibility first on you, to me. Right. Then the five or, or 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 three listeners that we do have. All of y'all. <laughs> all of you guys. <laughs> I'll get on. I'll get on that Kendrick assignment. Oh wait. I I'm I here for it. All right. I'm sorry. I feel like I cut you off there. I got excited. No, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's a Spotify playlist. We might get a sponsor, guys. We don't know. No, that's no, how no. you you just you know, no, low key. And see that out there. So wait, these are two brands that I never thought I'd ever see together. SABC and Disney. Yeah. Africa. So. Yeah, they signed a deal to have ESPN. Um, as a channel, as part of the SABC network, ESPN um, free channel. Mm-hmm. ESPN is coming to South Africa. Are well, we gonna watch baseball and like American <laughs> football? What's going on? <laughs> like, why couldn't they secure? Basically, that's that's. Sport? that's <laughs> yes, you are correct to say that we're gonna be watching American sports. Well, welcome to. What is it, the International Football League that the only Americans play in? You know what I mean? <laughs> We're going to watch it, finally. Now they're going <laughs> to so add the international into that. So, like, what if now, like, team, we start to develop, like, football teams and all of that, and we start to, like, have, like, eight-year-olds with, like, oh, what is this, this that, that brain damage thing that, like, football players get? Dog. Oh, what is it uh, where you get hit in the head too much? Yeah. Yeah, that Will Smith movie. <laughs> Concussion. <laughs> ah, yeah. thanks for that. You should play yeah, 30 yeah. seconds, right? You told me. Essentially, so they're just like spreading brain damage around the globe. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that was um, I'm not excited. No, you know what? I think it's an interesting strategic move from SABC because, you know, they're going to have for variety content. In terms of like, it's no longer just SBC one, two, three. Yeah. ETV is its own beast because they've got open view, but now they're adding mm. to to the tier roster. It's gonna be interesting. I wonder what else will be there besides baseball and football. Um, yeah, because I can't imagine what plays on MLB, ESPN. Oh well, we will have American NBA soccer, NBA. Oh, but yeah. don't we have NBA on on DSTV though? On the Super Sport channel, or not Super Sport, there's a channel. But then I think ESPN will give us NBA, but I wonder yeah. if it will give us NBA Africa, because that's also another thing. They just might make that a thing, also, like, make it, like, a thing thing. No, it's a thing thing. No, like, I mean, like, yeah. oh. like in face type of... Yeah, because it's been in the back. Yeah. I feel like the, the NBA Africa hasn't been put in the upfront, but I've been noticing, side note, lin- li- LinkedIn, eh? Not, I'm just saying, just it just popped up, but like a lot of jobs for NBA Africa have been coming up, communication jobs. So that actually could be a big part of this collaboration is that they're going to drop mm. NBA Africa content here. Mm. And that is a good strategic move yeah. for SABC. That sounds like SABC and Disney Africa is two brand names I never thought I'd hear yeah. in one sentence. Like, in my mind, that is a far-fetched concept, but yeah, well done to the team. Um, I'm not surprised that they're having talks with your Disney Africas and whatnot, because remember, the SABC, we know this, they're planning to go digital, proper digital, you know, like, there were talks and whatnot. So with them retrenching people, it was them definitely saying okay guys now we are for real we are going digital okay we're tired of having post post pe- people but to melama post every day and whatnot we're going digital so i'm not surprised at their collaborations i'm just surprised at the fact that they went with espn first but now that you guys are talking about it and you guys are talking about the exposure and sports yeah sabc did lag on the sporting front so yeah Maybe Multi-choice them incorporating them in sports the- is. Yeah, they only had PSL, ne? Uh, yeah. Sell out stadiums, so like... 
They yeah. needed sports sports content because I think it's a very strategic move, especially against multi choice. Because multi choice, yeah, super sport is the backbone of that entire business. Mm-hmm. It is. So now competing them with them indirectly because okay, you've got soccer, you've got this, but hey, there's this budding basketball culture that is in Africa. There's a demand for this content. Hey, now we've got it. Yeah. And now this will give them exclusivity because I remember multi choice was struggling with ESPN for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, were, had the channel, they, they had the channel, then they lost it. Then they had it, then they lost it. Then they had it, then they lost it. So this is interesting. But allegedly, it is an interesting deal. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> Um, I'm looking forward to the NBA Africa. I'm not looking forward to baseball and softball and oh, and football because I like football. It reminds me of rugby a lot. Okay, I won't lie though, low key. Like I said, I don't watch sports, so I'm not excited to watch it. But I think it will be fun to see a softball culture in SA expand because I enjoyed playing softball in school. It's a fun game to play, and it's it's shorter than cricket, so I feel like it's an it's like mm. cricket light <laughs> for the rest of us who want to chill the whole day, like the whole day, bruh, in the yeah. sun, you know, <laughs> cricket light. I think that's a good one. <laughs> We've got rugby and rugby <laughs> light, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's shorter than <laughs> cricket. <laughs> it's shorter. Than, dude, have you watched a full cricket match? I've never, but I've seen somebody watch it, bro. It takes hours, bro. Yeah, like, that's like you're chilling I've... for the whole day. You know what I mean? Like, like It's a whole day event. Like, yeah. That's, I remember working on a Cricket South Africa. Sometimes it takes a weekend. A whole weekend? Yeah. Yeah, Cricket South yeah. Africa campaign. Yeah. And, like, we are trying to get people in the stadiums. And it's like, what do people do at a cricket thing? And everyone is you talking cry, about it. It's drink. a family event. Yeah, you take a nap, you wake up. So, I'm like, like, they're not even watching <laughs> the game, really. They're just chilling. Yeah, you're just chilling, dude. And then when somebody hits a six, somebody notices, yells. Everybody notices, you yell. You're like, yeah. And then you move on. You know what I mean? Continue the conversation. What is the point of the sport? It takes forever. It's like a it's a picnic type sport, you know what I mean? It's like a sport. Yeah. It's like a an it's like the icky. To go out and just like chill, have like young picnic for the day type yeah. of thing. That's like what it, that's like what it's like really about, like as a spectator sport. You know what I mean? The it's like a it's like a, a background type of thing. You have it in the background and yeah, you know? It's like loft music. Yeah, <laughs> lo fi uh, music. Lo-fi music, yeah, it's like lo fi <laughs> sport, you know what I mean? Oh, wow, uh, lo fi sports because most like most art thing, team sports like that, and all like they they so short, like the time spans are so short that it creates a certain mm. sense of like urgency throughout the match. It's like you have to like pay attention because like two minutes is enough for something for the game to turn around like softball it's fast paced that's why i yeah. like it it's like yeah. okay okay yeah you've softball is be... like more like baseball as yeah. opposed to cricket true because you go around in a circle instead of like a straight yeah. line yeah so, i'm just yeah I'm just, i don't know i haven't played baseball before but i don't know maybe i have and i thought it was so softball yeah they <laughs> Now that you guys have convinced me and changed my mind, you've changed your mind. See, yeah, I can't wait to see the ESP. You know, I'm really sensitive about international things, so no. I know. But you, you went to this. You're a politician at heart, babes. I know, politician at oh, heart. Oh gosh. Listen, they re- they rejected me so many times. I think it's because they saw that I'm afraid of politics. They're like, ah, this one, <laughs> she's not for us, bro. She's not for us. Not at all. No, like no, she's not strong enough. She yeah. she can't even be part of the DA at this point. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Listen, yeah, I really no. I'm that person, bro. When we go politics, I'm not mm leave me out of it. Mm mm, I ain't trying to. Next thing, whenever somebody now a new regime comes through them, like, oh yeah, Tando said no no no. Listen, you don't know how I feel. You don't know where I stand, okay? Leave me out of it. I'm on the winner's side. That's what side I'm on. Leave me out of it. Sandra's not, Sandra's not playing that, that party. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. Hey, hey, politics, guys, is headache. I've bro. always... 
it is a headache. I've always wondered what would, that's why I've never like proper proper be in a relationship with like a full time politician. However, I I would it would be interesting for me to be in a relationship with someone who is like on the opposing side of things. Like probably like they 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 like the DA or they like uh f- f- do you know the political party go f- f- <laughs> Honestly, I, I thought that was a technical glitch the first time you said it. And then you said it again. I'm like, what? No, I do not. Wait, wait, wait. You don't know? <laughs> you know a V and an F in Afrikaans is a F and a F. Oh. Because <laughs> I was seeing VF, I was thinking VF. I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, I've seen that. I've seen that before. Now that you said it like that, sorry, yeah, now guys. I won't forget it. Now. Listen, I I did listen. I barely made it through Africans. Like I was on the knees scraping. <laughs> I, I that flew over my head <laughs> completely. When you said fa fa, I saw. I was like f a f a. What's that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> their political party it'll be interesting because they, you'll be surprised to see how many black people actually support those kind of those parties yeah no it happens yeah. it does happen i think because of the way that you i don't think if i have to tell you friend I, I don't think you guys would last but i think you would do it because you like to engage in in debate because again <laughs> i think you would last I don't know if you guys are lost because I can see you getting <laughs> mad, bruh. Like, we're now a quarter, bruh. Like, the color within you will come out and be just like, you know what? Nah, nah. Just leave me alone. Just, I, I can't, I can't with you. I'll see yeah, Like, you proper go African so this person. Like, proper. I see the color within you come out. Come this side, bruh. This side. Like, you see you in this space, this side. I don't see a lot. You know, I, I believe in you, friend, though. If you say it's going to last, I'm on your side. I'm on your side. You know why I'm saying it's going to last? Because the bottom line will be that he would have different connections from a different perspective, right? Yeah. And I have my connection from my Black people. So that type of interaction is important for the culture. And okay, I see we be coming for the land one piece at a time. I understand. You see? But then at the same time, what happens when there's clashes, bruh? What if okay, you're coming with your own agenda, but then Home Slice is also <laughs> coming with his own agenda on how to secure the land. You coming for the land and he's like, Okay, how are we gonna secure the land? So it's just that yeah. con- that contention, bruh. You're gonna always be trying to one up each other, bruh. It's <laughs> just like Ish and that's true. We also we always gonna try one up each other. Ish. I, that's that's Ish. not like I don't see a lasting unless you mean <laughs> death do us part type of lasting. But I don't know. No, I yeah, no. But it would be interesting to see. I'm not saying that I'm interested to date people who are Daso or or FUFA or white organizations. But it would that would be an interesting it will be an interesting dynamic for that two months because, guys, I'm a contract of our last. <laughs> I think I would last longer because I do the... I Listen, I in China. I would avoid the topic so long, for, for long enough that I, I would probably last longer, though. I don't know. Yeah, you would You would definitely last longer because you'd be yeah, like, ah, I'm not interested. You you'd be out here wanting to know who is doing what in this pop culture life, okay? <laughs> yes. Until I see a political party mixing up with hot topics, I'm losing the anime. Ish. I can't wait for those type of hot topics. Hey, politicians, get up to scandals, guys. We want to talk about y'all. Come on. No, it's it's coming. They're still trying to figure out how to get out of this looting drama that they got yeah, themselves the, into. Hey, the looting drama also. You know what I mean. I can't. No, we are not talking about the unrest <laughs> that happened recently. Yes, we're talking about the looting that happened up top. in July. 
Angela is. And, and COVID-19, I still want to know where those, how many trillions, where, where, you know what? There's a lot of looting here in SA. <laughs> there was a lot of looting. Looting started with white people when they came to our country with nothing in their pockets and then they decided Tiffany to loot our land. Co. Tiffany and co, they started the looting mm. problem of mm. South Africa. <laughs> That's where it started. So if these people want to get the monies back from all the lootings, they must just go knock at Tiffany and Co's door. And then we'll recoup, we'll recoup all the money that we lost from the looting. I'm pretty sure. Once, that's what they must do. It's funny how when, when, when white people did this, it was okay. But then when black people are like, guys, let's do what they did. Let's loot back. Yeah, we were just no, discovering no, no, no. the things at Macro. Dude, we were just discovering them, guys. It wasn't yeah, we just, no, yeah, we were discovering them, Mama. Them. My appliances, you know, the TVs. Like those I ones discovered the TVs, a fifty-two inch the other day. Dude, <laughs> I'm lying, guys. I didn't discover one. Please don't come search my house with the cops. Uh, <laughs> but essentially, that's what you know. We're going back to this Beyonce Jay Z story. I don't want to. I don't want to give them too much energy because it's gonna piss me off. But yeah, <laughs> it's gonna piss me off because hey, guys, let you know what? I, I ain't even gonna say nothing. On a lighter note, though, congratulations is due. I, mean, I feel like we, South Africa already knew what was happening here, but now it's yeah. official. Official, she's announced uh-huh. it. She's now uh-huh. telling us. But yeah, DJ Zintle is expecting baby number two. And it comes with a reality TV show. Um, Are you going to watch the show? <clears throat> I I like DJ Zintle, but I don't think her life is interesting enough for me to watch on TV. <laughs> um... <laughs> Like she's too much of a drama free person for me to watch. You know, Kiri Kumar, right? Yeah, she's, she's got drama. Right? Yeah, I think I'll check it out. I'll try it out. I'm gonna try it. I'm going to I'm no, gonna give it a it. chance. I don't know how I'll I feel it. about it because I like DJ Zinte. I think yeah, you remember I that time too. when we walked past her and her bestie wearing <laughs> wearing heels because I'm like, I know these girls are the same height as us. There's no way <laughs> that Paul Tusi is that tall. She must have been wearing some hectic heels. But remember when they were trying to be incognito there in Sanson? Mm-hmm. I think DJ is a very pretty, very pretty chick. I, I'll watch it because I don't know much about her besides uh, who her baby daddy is <laughs> that she's got music and her best friend is Pearl. So I'm curious. <laughs> I'm curious. Because uh, her man's from Pretoria, ne? Or Meta Bongs. Mm, so I'm Sasha. Sasha Nguve. So I'll watch. I'll watch. I'll support. I'll support my people. I'll watch. Yeah, I'll check it out. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, you're right. She's not She's not for the mess. Like, I think Pearl 2C is more for the mess than... Yeah. Pearl 2C is more for the mess, bro. She's here. Mm. She'll serve. Serve mess. So I don't know. But we'll see. I'm sure we'll see a bit of Pearl 2C as well on the show. Um, I... I'm not saying that I'm not going to watch the show. I'm going to watch the show. I'm just not excited for the show. It's not... Yes. You see, you understand what I'm saying. It's I'm not excited, but I'm going to watch. So... Uh-huh. But I'm, I'm not excited to watch. And I've seen parts where she's crying, and now I'm curious. What was she crying about here? You know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm also not excited, but I'll watch it. I'll watch it. But congratulations to her and Murder Bongs on expecting their first child together. Yes. Um, Cairo is going to have a little sibling, I wonder. Is it a boy? Uh, is it a girl? Is it a boy? Is it a girl? You know? What type of a big sister is she going to be? Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's going to... Listen... I think it will be wholesome. You know what I'm you know what I'm getting, man? And I think this is what it's gonna be. More like Tiana Taylor's show. 
with her husband and uh, Junie. Um, I think it's yeah. like more of that wholesome family fun dynamic. It's not going to be the drama like Real House of Atl- Atlanta or Potomac or even or Tamar. Up with Teddy. Yes, you know, it's not going to give us drama. It's going to it's going to serve us wholesome family values. And that's what we wanted, mm-hmm. right? We were complaining just now about um jo- uh, what is Moja Love and all of these. Moja Love. Mm. Showing a negative representation. So I think it's good. So I'm going to watch because oh no, I don't have I don't have DSTV, so they won't see my ratings. Never mind, but I'll watch. <laughs> I'll watch. I'll watch. I'll probably use the hashtag too. Hopefully that'll help. They won't see my ratings, but I'll watch. I'll watch. It will be on Showmax, right? Don't just say that. No, but it's going to be on Showmax, right? No, I'm not going to pass. I don't have GSTV, but I'll watch. (laughs) No, wait. Wait, it's going to be on Showmax, right? That's how I'll watch it. I I just thought about it. I'm like, where am I going to watch it if I don't have DST? I hope it's on Showmax because I've got Showmax. I don't have DSTV though. Isn't her show in BET? Ah, you know what? I, I tried, dude. No, but B, BET content won't be on Showmax. Or oh, does Viacom has, have a streaming platform? Because, you see, it's too complicated now. I actually was thinking about this the other day. I'm like, remember, there was a point where DST, oh, Multi Choice was telling us that. The reason why the premiums are so high is because it would be too expensive for everyone. Oh, no, the reason you can't choose your, your own channels on a bouquet is that certain channels cost more than others and it would be too expensive. I'm like, well, look at us now in 2021 where you can stream off of all of these broadcasters and actually compare it. Is it the same cost as paying for DSTV premium? Because you can like subscribe. Yeah. Premium. Netflix is like how much? Like one fifty or something. Then Peacock is also there. They so eight... assume all of them are like two hundred, right? On average. On average. Yeah. So that's like five different at it at it one go. Yeah. And you get to watch that at any time. Uh pause it, dip, watch something else, and then like resume from the exact point where where you stopped watching. Uh and you're not limited to the hard drive space on on that uh, thing on your decoder. You limited to the server space that Netflix has, which is unlimited basically in like our range of things. So yeah, dude, like the upsides are just too many. Like I could I could go all day. Yeah, the value the value challenge is now being really challenged because people can actually go back and compare. It's like yeah. I only watch if you say I only watch HBO programs and DSC that I like, I only like the NBC stuff and then I want Showmax for my local content. You know That's I mean? three subscriptions. <laughs> That's and then maybe add in like the fourth one, Netflix, and then for the kids, Disney Plus. Right. But it's not available in SA, but you but know. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so like a nice that. combo there. Yeah, because no lie, I only watch Super Sport when, like, personally, I only watch Super Sport on DSTV. Other than that, like, I I don't watch anything on DSTV, dude. Like true. honestly, dude. We yeah. That's I, true. I don't even remember the last time I touched the DSTV remote, bruh. <laughs> All I know is two o three. That's it. <laughs> That's all you know. That's all I know. That's all I need. <laughs> I don't even watch the music channels on DSTV anymore. Like, that's how... Apparently, Rick and Morty is on Disney. See, I, I watch it on Netflix even sometimes. Well, yeah. I won't tell you where I watch it all the time, but yeah. <laughs> all right. And then, okay, so Donda is... I, I can't believe you guys literally told me at the same time, like... Uh, uh, Sharon's like, dude, and Donda's out. I'm like, nah, dude, it was a listening party. Then this nigga comes through, he's like, nah, it's out, dude. Yeah, it's out. Like, Guys, well, I feel it. like he slipped. But Ye's, apparently, Universal dropped it without Ye's permission, and they left out that song, Jail 2. You know what I mean? He just, like, posted not so long ago. Well, they had to drop it without his permission. If they waited for Ye to tell them when to drop it, it was never going to drop. No, Ye set the date of September 3rd. Yeah, when it was okay, 
again, it goes back to that Dre versus Ye conversation that Amo and I have, uh, or Sharon and I have been having, yeah. where who's going to do better in terms of sales and this and streams and all of that. And I was like, listen, I think Drake has a loyal following and he's more widely. Yeah, um, like he, he has more, a wide appeal. Yeah. Whereas Ye's got a cult following. Yeah. More so. <laughs> No, no, not cult like that. She, you know, she even said the album's on a flop. I hope. I, let me see where the album is right now on Spotify because I can't believe it dropped and I missed it. I want to see where is how well done this album is perfor- performing. I like when you say how well. Uh, yeah, I want to see. Of course, how- it's performing well. He had to he created hype for three he created hype in three listening sessions. Of course it has to be joke. For, Apparently for, he for, made for over twelve million dollars from those three listening sessions before even dropping the album. He wasn't was, it from the first two? Well it was once the third one was done, then they announced yeah, the number. So it's from oh, the three yeah. that he made the twelve million. Alright, that's good. Before even dropping the album, this man was able to make money. GQ GQ says that it was the listening party was brilliant, provocative, and performative performance art. It was a pro- pro- provocative performance art. I'm not seeing any performance stuff. I guess it's because it hasn't been 24 hours yet. Yeah. I don't but, know. Like personally, like I'm I'm a bigger I'm a bigger Kanye fan than a Drake fan, personally. Like, don't get me wrong, the Drake songs are, like, mad, relatable, and, like, very quotable, you know what I mean? But, like, I I admire artistry more than I do, um, you know what I mean? Like, because, like, I mean, Drake is an artist, you know, he writes and all of that. Well, but, not everything. Well, yeah, <laughs> Quentin, Quentin Miller. Okay, he gives Quentin his props. <laughs> You oh, you saying? should hear that. You need to hear episode two. The the, <laughs> but like personally, like I don't know. I'm I'm with there, like, and I I'm not somebody to look at numbers, cause like I mean, obviously Drake is gonna perform well. He's that dude who gets like a billion streams. Uh, for coughing. For coughing, you know what I mean. Uh so hey man, I think both of them are gonna have, have successful release dates. So I'm sure Don is doing well. And I I'm think certain that Drake will do well too. I think Donda is going to have a different type of success yeah. than what Drake's album will. Yeah. Drake's album will be successful in terms of the traditional sense where it's I think have a whole lot of commercial appeal. Commercially, where I think Kanye's Donda is going to have a lot more cultural significance. Yes. yes. That will when it was, it's gonna be more meaningful to the culture yeah. than whatever Drake's gonna drop. That's just my opinion. Yeah. But I, I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Let me check out our, our good sister. Ah, uh, me, <laughs> me, <laughs> me. I'm saying Drake is a better artist. Kanye is a better producer. That's that right. on that. I, again, I'm not gonna say artists. Kanye. No, Kanye is Musical Kanye artists? is the better producer. What do you mean? You by can't artists, you, though, like because like you know what I mean. What do you mean by because that's like a very like broad. It's not broad. When you're a producer, you produce the music. When you're an artist, you're in front of the camera. You are recording the music. Yeah, so Drake, for me, he's the better pop artist. He's the better guy that you see on TV. Man. That you see on. Yeah, he's he a better a, friend man than Kanye West. To sell, and his music is, is like more relatable. You know what I mean? But when it comes to artistry, I mean like Kanye basically creates the entire thing. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, we are forced to. Uh, hence I said, you can't create the whole entire thing you by can. yourself. Like, you if you're like really thing. talented enough, you know what I mean? Because like apart from just putting one's voice on like uh, like on a like you're speaking into a microphone when it comes to now the tech technical aspect of everything the production making sure that what making the end product be like sounding what you wanted it to be 
as well as I mean also giving people credits for the the jobs that they do on these like projects and all of that. Like, I mean, he creates Ooh, art because sorry, like 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 the part. GQ uh, excuse like the GQ article that you just like read like. He, that was performance art. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a t- different type of art. So when it comes to overall artist, I feel like Kanye is an artist, whereas Drake is like more of a pop culture figure. I say that Drake is the better artist than Kanye West. Kanye West is a better producer. That's what I'm okay, saying. We got, we got a Drake stand. You know what I mean? <laughs> So you didn't I'm like you didn't like say, 15, eh? I'm not saying I'm not I'm not hating on Kanye West. There are tracks by Kanye West that I love. There's there, there's music from Kanye West that I listened to from back in the days. But like I cannot sit and say that yo, when I'm bored, I listen to Kanye West. Like for me, Kanye West is a mood. You know, he's not a vibe. And if I were to rate my mood based most of the time i want to vibe i don't want to mood like a, a a somber mood or a certain type of mood in order for me to listen to music so i get where you guys coming from when you say like he's an overall artist or whatever but for me i like listening to music based based on the vibe not the mood because i'm not really necessarily a you know a, a kind of type of person like a you moody know, person like I mean, like, yeah. Drake makes music for, like, makes music for you, you know what I mean? Like, he, the music he mm, makes is, it's like... for the people. Is, yeah, yes, for the people and more catered towards women as opposed to, like, getting really technical and, like, having, like, witty lines and, you know what I mean? Like, it's not super technical as opposed to now. It's, like, more R&B. Uh, so, where would you... So, who would you compare Kanye West to? would I compare Kanye Ooh. to you see Yo. that is a brilliant question Yo. that is a brilliant question I wouldn't compare him to like any mu- musician artist like or at least within the yeah. realm of like er- pop culture like yeah. I'd compare him to a different type of artist I'd compare him to artists you know what I mean some people and who then go yeah, I would people, I'll compare Kanye like, to Van Gogh yeah Van Gogh like artist <laughs> somebody who would like oh, really God. Like, you know what I mean? Gets into their art and, like, gets messy with it and all of that. You know what I mean? Like, somebody who gets, like, the paint on, like, their clothes and, and their fingers. Biting and their own ear off. That That's is why wild. I said, <laughs> That's why I said Van Gogh. Because yeah. he bit his own ear off. But Van Gogh died broke. That's the only difference. Yeah, that's but only he difference. Also, he was also not black, so, hey. That's true. <laughs> um, I hear where you guys are both coming from. I think definitely drake's got more mass appeal the guy and besides i think what i wanted to add on to what you're saying to me is like drake makes me music for the people kanye makes makes it for himself it's not yeah, about the it people. comes from within yeah you know what it's I not mean? for people it's for him yeah and he's just sharing what's for him whereas drake is making i music. don't agree with that you don't think so i think I he makes music that. for him and he shares it I feel like Kanye he, West is self-centered. So he, he tells a story, like, but then again, for himself. But yeah, I think it's for but himself. But then again, like, it's ther- I think he uses music as a therapy. He he tells stories, yes, that are related to what's going on in his life and all of that. But Drake does the same thing. It's just that now Drake, Drake, oh, it's centered towards women. You know what I mean? He's most of the time he's talking about women, as opposed to. Kanye, I feel who's talking about like actual yeah. real life things. You know what I mean? Because if you listen to like you go back a bit, you listen to uh Dark Twisted Fantasy, there's a lot of really like really relatable stuff in the like in that album. Mm. It's just that like it's remind us again, Dark Dark Twisted, what was on this album um, that was popular? Devil in the New Dress, um that was mm. run away. Uh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, okay, okay. These, it's a lot of art, man. Like, it's like the replayability is just intense. Whereas I feel like a Drake song, like, after like, after 10 years, it doesn't really smack the same. I feel like the biggest Drake song that, like, has, like, really, like, a uh, long term appeal or, like, is a like, classic, cult classic or whatever. 
he had like your Marvin's rooms. He had that song uh, where he shot it in Jamaica back in the day. Hey, hey, hey. hey. You know what I mean? <laughs> Best I ever had. But then the thing is like, how well does that work now? You know what I mean? Like, how well, Kanye, how well is Kanye West making for album, music for himself? Wait, no, like, play, listen, play a 10 year old Drake album and then play a 10 year old Kanye album. Hence, I'm saying I have those songs on my Spotify lists, like both yeah. of them. I there's Drake that I listened to from back when he did So Far So Gone. There's mm-hmm. Kanye West songs that I listened to from what's that album? Within the Wire was that the graduation before that one? The Wire. That was na, na, na. Late registration. Late registration. Yeah. yeah, I do have like the albums, but like Kanye West, and don't he's. Forget- but I, also I say, derives from Kanye. Also, those first three albums, though, Late Registration, College Dropout, and what was that um, other one that you just Graduation. Mentioned? Graduation. I won't lie. Those were cornerstone albums for Kanye's yeah. career. Those exactly. are classics. True. True. Yeah. You can play those albums right now, and they still slap. I feel like almost every Kanye album is a classic. Nah. Almost. I said almost. Listen... I can cool. say I can say that there are, there are albums that I was not a fan of. Like I can yeah. admit that there are albums I was just like, hmm, that's questionable. <laughs> I was just like, hmm, that's questionable. But like yeah, because think about it. Like how how hard has like Kanye himself shift like shaped current hip-hop culture like i mean drake sound himself he's admitted this himself like derives from your kanye west album like you listen drake sound derived from soldier boy too yeah (laughs) yeah yeah that was just yeah that was just biting (laughs) yeah but think about it also after 808s and heartbreaks sure t-pain was like the popular like dude at that point in time to like who was pushing like the whole origin thing but after 808 and heartbreaks how hard of a turn did hip-hop take you know what i mean i i think 808 and heartbreaks made they made he made autotune more acceptable because remember t-pain did it everyone started trying to do it they shut on him for jay-z it. came through shut it down then everyone's just like cringing before they could do it then he dropped 808 heartbeats and then people are like okay i guess we can use you know uh, I mean. auto tune because well yay used it yeah and he chills with jay so i guess you know it's I mean. cool but like you know essentially i feel like he has a, unless i got the timelines thing. crossed but yeah i don't know but like hey it's like a it's, it goes down to preference you know it really does go down to preference. Yeah, it goes down. That's why I say there's some albums for me that Kanye, for me, didn't slap. Like, 808, for me, it was after that where I was just like, hmm, I started questioning. Yeah. Dark, Dark Twisted Fantasy, you talked about that. I've got a couple of songs that I like, but I wouldn't say, like, it was a monumental cornerstone album in my mind um, when I think of Kanye. Um, the, For me, it was those first few albums that Kanye, for me, was the most raw, authentic like, this is him doing his yeah. thing. Then he, he went on artistic routes. There were nice songs, but I wouldn't say I like the albums. Whereas with those previous ones, I like the albums. But yeah, I don't know. Then from there, like, I, I kind of just, like, I'll dip my toe in and out. I'm like, I don't know how you're going to do me, Kanye. But I'm a fan. No lie. Like, I, I see the vision. I see the artistry. But I was like... I also, I think though you can't you can't like everything somebody does. I feel like at some point yeah. you're being disingenuous. Like you can't like everything. Yeah. At some point you need to be like, okay, I disagree with something here or there. Well, somebody's lying. Yeah. Because then yeah, you just sure. to fall into the realm of just like dick ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I mean? hey, so I not how it performs, but. I'll listen to it when I get time. Yeah, I also, um, I'll take a moment I, to... Yeah, I don't want to listen it. to the album because it's out and now I must force myself yeah. to like to well, like things that I don't like. <laughs> don't don't fall for the peer pressure. Don't fall for yeah, the like peer pressure. Yeah, like I want to listen to it by myself. Yeah, that's true though. 
No, but I will listen to the album though. Like I said, he is well. I did say he is gonna release it because he created so much theatrics. No, he for... was gonna do it. And yeah, you saw he had. But album. You saw he had Kim uh recreate their wedding day. She was wearing her wedding dress there at the third listening party, and then he set himself on fire, guys. I heard about this. I haven't seen it. Fucking art. I want to see. I'm like, yeah, how did how he set himself on He's fire? Wearing, like the the suit. Oh, a fire suit yeah. with like um resist like yeah, reduces fire. the heat yeah, against yeah. his actual skin. Yeah, that's wild. But like Only that Kanye. is beautiful. He puts on a show. You know what I mean. Hi guys, that's such an easy. Okay, but like Marilyn <laughs> Manson was there. I was just like, yeah. that was just random. I was yeah, just like, like guys, you setting yourself on fire. <laughs> Uh, that's somebody who's uh, dedicated to to what it is they're doing you know what i mean showmanship he's an artist listen no can you miss can you needs to get needs to get help guys like guys yeah. stop hyping up people wanting to set themselves on fire he's not a rock star but he well, is, he is like yeah <laughs> but he, he is, is though you know no I mean? he's not he's not a rock star guys there are rock stars out there that literally live the rock star life he's not he living a rock star life he's living... how you know more I mean? rock star could you get though ah uh, ah uh, no nah. that's satanism guys uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. satanism uh-uh. setting yourself on fire like around okay why was you like shepherding zion around the bed in the second listening session. Wait, I missed you saw that, that part. Right? I missed that part. What had happened at the, at the listening party? The second listening party. Yeah. Nashapas come around some as you around the bed. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Listen, Kanye likes to play with symbolism. He I remember, I think it was after the list, second listening party where he did a talk and he was telling everyone, or was it prior to this, where he was telling everyone that we need to be careful because the media uses a lot of symbolism in the content that they feed us and we need to be aware of this. I think Kanye, he tells us these things because he wants us to see the symbolism. And then he shows us symbolism in his content. He's, guys, yeah, it's like what we spoke at time. It's about, like what we spoke about last time. Kanye is a, an amazing PR man. He knows yeah. how to get the attention. He knows how to make people talk. That's what he does. Every time before he drops something, there's controversy. Then he drops something. Think With about this it, album, he had to build it up. Look like look like that Illuminati tip that everybody was giving him for. Oh yeah, watch the throne. There he he, he did not even in. Uh, he I, he like, didn't hide the symbolism. Like, oh, you guys think we in the Illuminati? Oh, we we in <laughs> France now. I mean, you know, this is in Paris, man. I'm not saying he's part of the Illuminati. I'm saying no, as a black person from Africa, no, when no. I'm looking at it, I'm like Satanism. <laughs> No, 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 we, no, we yeah, we feel you. No, we weren't saying that. We weren't saying that you're saying that. <laughs> and this is why I think him and Lil Nas X, they've definitely got some type of mentor, mentor, uh, mentor, mentee relationship because you saw what Lil Nas X did with those sneakers and a little bit of blood and then all of that hype just so he could drop his first single with Kanye. And then that song was fire. Industry, baby, that was fire. And but still, how long did it last on the charts, though? It's still That's my thing about... But it's still, can, it's still in the top 10, though. But, like, for example, I'll make an example. Adele. Adele doesn't need all of that. And then she lasts longer on the charts. What I've realized about pop culture, I think, is that there's, there's, there's talkability about certain artists for a... It's like a campaign. Right? Mm-hmm. So... What I question about that whole Lil Nas um, industry baby release is the talkability, yes, it was around for like a week plus, and then after that, it died out. And yes, it is still like part of the top 10, but I I expected it to like run further because of the, you know what we said previously about hyping up too much and then you have high expectations. So maybe that's what I heard from from the song, you know? Now I feel you. But, 
but he is a but he is brilliant at I mean Lil Nas's PR team is on point. He does have a good PR team behind him. But I think maybe if they can just look at like a longer longevity because guys it's very rare to come across uh an artist that can I mean the the last black artist that I can think about that pulls such as such things off as Michael Jackson. True, he was he was the stuntman of, of all stuntmen. He changed his face a couple of times. That's that's how stunting that guy was. He literally <laughs> changed his face a couple of times and burnt off his nose once on stage. <laughs> that's what I thought. I thought that burning where, where Kanye burns himself. I thought he was paying homage to 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 uh, MJ because <laughs> I remember the time where Michael Jackson's head started burning on stage because there was a spark from one of the the. the Fire lighters, whatever they call those things, the lights that he was using, the pyro lights, mm-hmm. actually got onto his hair. And remember, they used to use a lot of hair gel and hair products back then, so he mm-hmm. started a flame. And then he, that's how his nose melted off. Mm. Yeah. Maybe it was plastic. Yeah, yeah. That's why you had to get the final <laughs> plastic one. Yeah, but yeah, guys, um, we will listen to Donda <laughs> and we'll give our reviews on the album. Um, oh. Don't expect me to. Don't don't expect me to be negative, guys. I just don't like Kanye West's a uh, what you call this PR thing. They this. just too much for me because I have to consume it by force, and I don't wanna. But I like to consume his music though. So yeah, that's 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 all. That's all. But yeah, we'll we'll keep you guys updated with the album and, and I how think- how it goes. I think also uh, Drake would have been out by then so we can actually talk about both albums, see how we feel about both. But again, I don't expect it to be the same type of albums because this, again, like I've said before, this is a meaningful album for Kanye. It's, it's, it's the album for his mom. And as an artist, he's expressing that pain and his grief. True. In terms True, of buddy. grief and pain, now that we're talking about pain... <laughs> Yo, yeah. <laughs> the Pied Piper himself. So this case is ongoing. Have you heard about the R. Kelly case? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I heard about it. You know what I mean? It's ongoing, and this time around, there is a victim that is testifying in court, and she's talking about everything. All she's feeling, all the tea, and apparently that was not the only thing being spilt. This man is nasty. This yeah. man is nasty. He was knowingly so even his doctors apparently. So this STD story, knowingly spreading STDs to, uh, since two thousand, I believe it was two thousand and three nine two thousand and nine seven oh seven two thousand and seven. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yes, he's been knowingly spreading herpes or STDs. I believe it was herpes since two thousand and seven. 2021 mm. he went to jail in 2020 mm. that is 13 years with 13 year olds probably mm. <laughs> that's not funny but yeah with 13 year olds allegedly this guy <laughs> allegedly my problem with R. Kelly is that listen I understand why he is the man that he is currently right he grew up being abused by women as a boy, as a kid, and it damaged him, like, yeah, like completely, right? And then God, you know, gave him the ability and the strength to prevail and use his talent. This man can't read. This man can't right. write. But he has created a whole lot of hits, and he's a musical genius. However, being a musical genius in the industry, especially Hollywood, you're telling me that as a grown-ass man, you don't know what's right and what's wrong. You know what's right. You know what's wrong. You know that you sleeping with girls underage is wrong because you're a grown-ass man. Yes, fine. You experienced what you experienced when you were a kid and you are messed up. You're supposed to work on yourself and make sure that you are good and healthy for yourself. 
especially with now, all those resources you you allowed yourself to continue in that way so you were comfortable in it essentially exactly so for him to take an opportunity to use his power to overpower these young girls for him to knowingly and and disrespectfully abusing and making these young girls sick it's disgusting the whole IK <laughs> situation is so messed up um because then allegedly they're saying also that he said that he he felt that he was entitled to young girls because of his fame and his wealth and his influence. So there's also those type of layers. And I understand hurt people hurt people. But like mm-hmm. you said, there comes a point in your life as an adult, you take accountability for yourself and yes. you can't you can't continue to blame your past or your upbringing for your behavior, you know. At some yes. point, where do you where do you draw the line between what is what was done to you and what you are now doing to others? There needs to be mm. a line draw a line drawn there. Yo, I Kelly. The case continues, guys. We'll be we'll stay on top of this with all the updates as the news comes in. But it's not looking good for the man. Aliyah's story also got brought up in this court case. Because allegedly she was actually pregnant and that's why they rushed into the marriage when she was 15 and he forged her ID to say that she was 18 or forged the forms to say she was 18 and then got her an ID, a fake ID in order to corroborate this. So that also came up in the court case, but because of um, the fact that she has passed on and she's not there to speak for herself, they do refer to her as Jane Doe. So it isn't by name, but we do we can tell based on the story that they tell around this relationship that it was Aaliyah that they're talking about. And I, I don't even think we still need to prove that it that what happened with Aaliyah happened. Like the the, the marriage yeah. certificate is online if you guys weren't sure about it. And we've been knowing since the two thousands about the story. Damien Dash has been telling us. They've all been telling us. Again, it's crazy. It's crazy how this man had this entire network of people helping him do this. That's the wild part for me, you know. I I understand why they were helping him because, like I said, he's a musical genius. He can't read. He can't write. When you're working on a track, you know that if you get Art Kelly on that, it's gonna be hit. a masterpiece. It's, a it's gonna be a hit. So they were protecting the money more than anything because R. Kelly was their money bag. Well, is their money bag. Yeah. They were securing the bag. Mm. So that's why they protected him. They were protecting him because this man has worked on gospel tracks, rock and roll tracks. He has worked on country music tracks. He has worked on a whole lot of tracks that we don't even know of. Hip hop tracks. Yeah. He is literally a music genius. Like, listen, when, when I wonder, I wonder who owns this man's masters. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check into this. I need to check into this because the catalog that this guy has, because he doesn't read or write, he makes music. Mm. Exactly. He will make a song. And that is, like, he needs to record it. And that's him making a song. So the speed at which he's making music also is different to that of a person who needs to write it down. Exactly. It's it's, it's different. He's a genius, guys. He's literally that. He's he's brilliant, but he's just a messed up, fucked up individual. Like, he's sick. But that's why I say, okay, Kanye also is a genius, though. But he's sick though. A different type of sick. But he's sick though. Kanye West is how can I put it? He told us he's a genius. No, I'm not disputing that he's a genius, but like we can't compare him to R. Kelly. No, R. Kelly is like a monster. No no no. <laughs> like when we say compared to R. Kelly, separate the man from the art. Yeah. We're talking about the artistry behind it. Of the music. Yes. We're talking about oh music. In terms oh. of music. Okay, no, they both geniuses, man. Not talking about their personal lives. That's why I said they're both geniuses, but they're both sick in their own ways. Yeah. 
I don't know, as long as like, as long as somebody's not harming other people, then like, hey man, then like, I, I just leave them to be happy with what it is they're doing, you know what I mean? But as soon as now we, we, we go into the realm of like, harming other people and all of that, uh... Fair enough. Uh, I think in the Kanye sense, he does hurt the people around him. Uh, well, his family, you heard what he said about Kim in his episode. And he was having an episode that was yeah. part of his bipolar condition. What did he say to Kim? Well, what he said about Kim on Twitter was that entire long thread when he was having his episode talking about how he had asked Kim to have an abortion, da da da. You remember that drama, bro? Oh, you know, when cried. Kanye, when you, you know, when Ye goes onto Twitter, yeah. bro, it's never a good story, really. So they both type of like they both sick, but in their own ways. But I feel like I just feel like if you're dating the Kardashian guys, like there's no like way you're gonna be a Kanye West and date a Kardashian and not have that type of episode. I you can tell, guys, like you can tell that when you are with certain people, there's just gonna be a lot of content creation control around it. You can imagine the type of commands. And restrictions Kanye West had because of the whole show. Yeah, he didn't didn't even want to be on the show. Yeah, but then I imagine he can't express certain things if it goes against what Chris wants. Because Chris is the boss of that family. And that's what he said is Chris Chris is the devil. Mm. He literally said Chris is the devil. Yeah, Uh, he's speaking his truth, you know what I mean? Okay, so Mm. I, I have a question on that. It's like, where do you draw the line between speaking your truth and now? entering uh, other territories where we're now getting uh, other people's lives involved and other people can be implicated and hurt in the situation. I feel like um, as long as you, you're speaking from perspective of self without any malicious intent towards the person, other people involved, you know what I mean? Like, as long as you're not going at them maliciously and you're just speaking from personal perspective, mm-hmm. then I feel like it's fair. You okay. know what I mean? I just check. I'm not disagreeing. I just, I'm just checking. I had a whole situation, so I just wanted to see maybe. It's got nothing to do with the podcast. So I just wanted to see <laughs> another another person's perspective on the situation. I, I. But yeah. I say when you are like he said it's about it's your it's about your intentions is your intentions to destroy the person or is the intention to make people aware of how the person made you feel as an individual mm. so it's it's that it's literally intention what is your intention when you speak in your truth so let that be the lesson of, for this week, for this episode, guys. Move with intention. Be intentional. And be aware of what your intentions are yeah. before you act. Because that is kind of the spirit of which, or the energy of which you're starting from. That's true. Because, like, they say karma doesn't care about the result. It only cares about the intention. You mm. know? Mm. 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 So, yeah. Intention, intention. Are you here to destroy or are you here to Good. to to bring about awareness, you know? Because bringing about awareness, guys, also brings about remedy. Because if people are aware of certain things or then somebody's can, aware of how someone made you feel, then there can be a solution. solution. Mm. Very true. Uh, but the moment a person tries to destroy you, then really what kind of solution can can come out of that? Yeah. Guys, it was fun. Um I hope Before we leave. Oh, do we have announcements? <laughs> <laughs> yes, class I like present. That. I like that. It means that we're gonna get it and we're gonna be having announcements soon. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> what are the announcements? <laughs> I wanted to ask you, what is the what? Remember, what is the wildest thing you've ever heard in your life? Wildest, craziest thing you've ever heard in your life? It can be like literally anything that you just heard and you're like, wow, that's wild. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, so this is not quite though. Okay, 
I actually had something for the, for this part of the show, right? I thought about something this week, and it's something that happened recently. I think I've told um, you about this before, but like this recent week, I had a meeting with one of my clients, and this chick is like, "Yo, I was watching the good the good doctor," and she's like, "I was watching the do- good doctor, and I saw this actress, man, and she looks just like you." Yeah. Does. <laughs> And she's like, this actress looks just like you. And I, I paused in that moment. I was like, I know exactly who she's talking about, but I'm not going to say anything. She's like, she's a South African actress. And, you know, she used to act in generations that are, I'm like, I, I stop her there. I'm like, girl, I know exactly who you're talking about. I don't know her real name, but I know what the, the, the character's name was on that show that you're talking about on, on Generations. And she's like, you know who I'm talking about? I'm like, yeah. So now we've got other people on the call and they're like confused. I can tell they're confused. So I'm like, okay, let me let me just help them out here. I was like, um, you're talking about um a corner from generations. She's like, Yes. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, there's a few people in SA uh SA TV culture, media culture that I have been in inverted commas here related to. And this one always comes up. So I decided, you know, I was like, since people keep telling me I look like this girl, I was like, let me do some research. So I found out her name is Maggie Benedict. She now lives in the U.S. She's been doing quite well in the U.S., by the way. Um, But you know what was funny? She's from Mums, bruh. I was like, what? She's from Mams. And then we're sort of, you know what I find out even after that? I'm reading her story. And they're like, her father's a doctor and her mother's a retired teacher. I'm like, I think I found my sister. I think I, think I found about her too. I'm like, who's lying? Whose parents are lying? Um, why why are they not telling me? I even confronted my mom about this. I asked her, I'm like, um, is there something you guys want to tell me? Because um, I've got a sister in the U.S. doing the most. If you guys need to tell me something, so <laughs> I don't know if you guys want to do a petition, get my get this this hand to talk to me. I don't know. I couldn't find her on inst- on Instagram because I was gonna send her a proper DM and be like, "Yo, bruh, people say we look alike. I hear your parent, your father's a doctor and your mom was a teacher. So like, I think we should talk because we could be related." <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> but no, I could not find her. So if you guys could help me find a, a cancelled listeners out there, I don't know. Help me find my sister. Maybe we could start a campaign. <laughs> Maybe we could start a campaign. But I think that is the wildest thing I've I've realized um this week is that I have a lot more in common with this actress than I thought. And she also does voiceovers, weirdly enough. So yeah, that was the first, that was the wild thing. I was just like so thrown off. I was just like, wow. <laughs> that is actually some dope, but weird as shit right there. Yeah, when they say celebrity look alike, they don't mean life alike. But anyway. <laughs> you just found yourself both. Yes. <laughs> oh, That's wow. crazy. Okay, so what what is your wild wild thing this week that has happened or lately? Uh, girl, so like you know there are there are there are people who who grew up being at a disadvantaged uh, position in their lives, and then when they see other people who are at a much more advantaged position in their lives they start hating and speaking um ill or bad things about those people right yeah so there's this guy right um he's from around here my hood this is kind of a real life situation type of thing well personal so this guy has a problem with this other boy i'm gonna call him a boy right (laughs) Because this boy, uh, uh, this boy had some sort of relations, right? Mm. So he was hating on that, you know. And every time he sees 
that he's always making reference to this boy. He's like, yeah, that boy, da, 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 this boy, this, this boy, that, this boy, this, this boy, that. So recently, we were at a gathering, and this guy spoke about how this boy is going to be useless in the next 10 years because he's he's a daddy's boy and he's spending his daddy's money. I was like, my nigga, okay, fine. He is a spoiled ass brat. His dad is spoiling him. Where do you enter? Why is it your why, why, Yeah, why are, you, why are you concerned that... It's not your child. He, it's like, no, you know, he's not using his opportunity properly. I'm like, so if he's not using his opportunity properly, what do you, why, why do you care? It's not you. It's not, it's not the opportunity. opportunity. That, exactly. So like, it's like, for me, that's like one of the wildest things that I, that I continuously hear. It's not even heard or recently heard. It's wild things that I continuously hear that, there are people who are literally hating on other people. Some people don't even know you, but they'll be hating on you. Mm. And they'll be wishing you bad things and you don't even know them. And you're just like, but what did I do to you? Like, mm. And people who usually do that are people who are, who are at a position in their lives where you know, they're just looking for someone to blame or for someone to 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 compare themselves to because why would you want to compare yourself to somebody who has a father that spoils them rotten? Yeah. If you know your parents don't spoil you rotten. But what, we, what did I say in the last episode? Stop comparing yourself to the person next to you. You only need to be better than the person you were yesterday. Stop comparing to the That's person true. next to you, bruh. Self-hate. Yeah, it's self-hate. That's the problem. And that's actually quite profound. It is self-hate. This person is upset about who they are and where they are in their lives. So they're projecting it onto other people. And that's not healthy. Mm-hmm. That is not healthy at all. You know, and there's a, there are a lot of people that we are constantly surrounded by on a daily basis that have the same self-hate that this particular gent has. Mm. you know and yeah i i for me every time i hear stories like that or every time i come across uh people who feel that entitled about other people's lives and how they should move or whatever like i i'm just like yo i'm my, my my guy or my girl you are bothered you are really really bothered yeah no definitely they have an internal situation that's going on that's why like if I feel like I get that type of hate from somebody, I'm just like, you know what? Go make peace with yourself, bro. I'm not going to entertain that conversation. I'm not going to entertain your beef with me. Because I know you need to make peace with you, dog. Like, your beef is not with me. It's in something you see in me that upsets you about you. <laughs> and that I can't control that. I really can't. <laughs> that is true. And it's true, but yeah, th- that's the craziest shit that I continuously hear. Haters hating on people because their lives are miserable. Shit. Yeah, that is wild. But again, you know, some people just, they got time. They got time on their hands. Interesting one. So what is the food, f- food for thought this, this episode? To be intentional and don't be mad at other people because you ain't them. Yeah, true. What did Chris Brown say? It's like you mad, but you can't even get in. Mm. How you gonna hit hit outside of the club? Yeah, Yeah. how you gonna hit from the outside of the club (laughs) when you can't even get in? That's the problem. That's the problem. I always say, I always tell people, lead with love. As long Mm. as you lead with love, you can't go wrong. Lead with love. Whatever you do, just lead with love. Anyway, guys, that is a wrap for this episode. Enjoy. Be sure to like, subscribe, subscribe. share <laughs> if you can. I can't believe you're now saying this. 
<laughs> yeah, guess who's trending again? And we're not going to talk about it in this episode. We'll like, tackle it in the Cyan- next Cyanide. <laughs> I knew Cyanide it. Cyanide is <laughs> trending again, guys. Ah, guys, no, no, this girl. We're not going to talk about that. That girl is just looking for attention now. Like, she's doing too much. Yeah. That's all I can Cyanide, say. Cyanide, go back to school. <clears throat> back to school because girl as as people who are older than you we can tell you some one thing at the rate that you're going by the time you are 25 (laughs) people would have long forgotten forgotten about about you you. who is this all right guys like that we're calling it a wrap um you heard the tag subscribe like comment but from our side much love and bye Bye.